I'm John Ivankovic. And I'm Jan Hermstad. Welcome to BioVet TV. Welcome to BioVet TV. Today we're going to start out by talking to the founders of BioVet. Jan Hermstead is going to talk to Greg Rush and I'll join you with Jimmy Allman. Hello, I am Jan Hermstad uh, here at location at BioVet.net with the founder Greg Rush. And uh, I'd like to ask Greg some questions so we can better understand how that he got involved in the Corvette business. So we all can learn a little bit about why the excitement is ours to have for the year 2015. Yes, Jan. Uh, I would have to say, let's go back to what got me involved in the car business. Just a little snipping of that. I was in actually high school and uh, a gas station was available for lease. And I actually leased a gas station when I was 15 years old. Very good. It had been closed for a couple of years, went in and cleaned it up, and arranged to uh, pay for the gas to be put in the tanks. And uh, then after high school, I'd ride my bicycle to the gas station because the local police knew me well. And I would uh, start washing windshields, checking oil, and uh, pumping gas. Well, so it sounded to me of, like you were an entrepreneur quite early. Well, in yes, I was. And I just had the love of cars and I worked on cars that I had owned even when I was 12 years old. And how did you transition to today's Corvette? So anyway, well after two years I decided that was not what I wanted to do so I sold the gas station and then pursued a career in electronics while also going to college for 10 years at night which was uh, <laughs> to get a couple of different degrees. But at uh, Somewhere at 40 years old, I had a midlife crisis, and I said, you know, I've always loved Corvettes. I think I'll start a Corvette business. And maybe there's room for somebody that is honest and straightforward with customers and to buy and sell Corvettes and just talk about Corvettes for the rest of my life. And that's what led me to uh, opening up the business. And ever since then, it has been Wonderful. The yeah. people have so much fun buying that dream car that maybe they wanted since high school. And now that the kids are out of college and they have the freedom to be able to just buy whatever they want to buy, they come in and they're fulfilling a dream and they're buying a Corvette. And that's fun. That's what keeps me going. I know having been associated with me, or with you, I should say, for close to a year now, I have learned a lot about Corvettes that I never knew existed. Details and things about each year really? and series. And uh, it's uh, very, very much passion behind your drive. Uh, and to watch uh, you unfold in 2015 with your prediction about what's going to happen to prices, to availability, and to how we're going to grow again. And uh, I, I see nothing but growth from you and the enthusiasm, the passion. So, uh, well, Corvettes, Corvettes are a good investment, no matter what year you buy. If it's pre-owned, I say if it's pre-owned. As we all know, as soon as you sign an invoice when you first buy a brand new car, it, the title changes from new to used. So, therefore, you're going to take the initial hit, but. Uh, in fact, just recently, there's an article in Wall Street Journal that tracks cars values over the last few years of buying a new one, what's it worth after one year, two years, three years. Corvettes depreciate the least of any car that we know of. So 
it's historically, if you maintain a Corvette and you keep it in excellent condition, it never goes below 40% of its original purchase price. That's good to know. That's really good now, to know. Now, we all know that if the Corvette becomes a collectible and older car, then it starts going back up in value. And some of these cars, like 65, 66, 67s, or 70s, 72s, that people bought for $3,000, $4,000. Today, the car could be worth forty to 400000 to $3 million. So, so how can we be sure now that we do get the available cars that are still on the road into our inventory? Well, that's, that's the hard part. I guess the not. money is made when you buy them, not necessarily when you sell them. I've, I've placed orders uh, with GM for truckloads of 1965 <laughs> Corvettes, but for some reason they never <laughs> fill the don't, order. Don't it would really be nice, Leon, if we could uh, just pick up the phone and order uh, some of the nice Corvettes. Let's say place an order for some 2008s and 2005s. And a mix yeah. and match, but that's that. That's the hard part of the business. And I know to find the best of the yeah. best. And I know that you've been in the business now here at Corvette uh, for about twenty five years, and so many people in this country do know and around the world too know you. And perhaps that's how you acquire some of these special cars that you. Well, have I there. think they know of the company by Yvette. It does have an excellent reputation. I don't know if they know of me, and it's not important that they know of me. The secret to success is to hire very knowledgeable people that are willing to help the customer determine what they want to buy. Yeah. And and weed through the different Corvettes, and one of them's going to speak to you and say, that's the one I want to take on. Well, I know you know a lot about Corvettes that uh, you probably over some segments can share with those that tune in. And not long ago, you did a fuel injection educational segment that probably should hear more about again. Okay. Well, I hope that there's many um, topics that we can discuss over time and also help educate the customers. Customers are eager to learn the important things to look for in buying a collectible car, whether it's a Corvette or a Camaro or whatever it may be. You want to buy something that has got good bones is a good value and not something that you're going to have to spend tens of thousands of dollars on uh, at the body shop repairing items that you don't see from looking at the outside of the car. All right, so let's take a look at that segment where Greg explains the fuel injection and the history with Corvette. Okay, sounds good. Welcome to the Buy a Vet Minute. Our attempt to inform everybody about the wonderful Corvettes that we have here at Biovet and the ones you may be looking at. Today I have with me Greg Rush, the owner and founder of Biovet, and we're going to talk about fuel injection engines. And today we have a beautiful 1958. Fuel injection started in 1957 and then ran from there and came in a variety of horsepowers. As we look at the interior of this one, I'll let Greg explain the mechanicals of how they really work. Today's technology in uh, fuel injection is individual cylinders have a little electrical pump. And when the cylinder is ready to take on the fuel, the, uh, a little electrical charge is charged to a, uh, a magnet inside and it acts like a little tiny mist sprayer. But in 1957, when Chevrolet introduced the fuel injection system, to the Corvettes, it was all mechanical. It wasn't electronic. So this is a 100% mechanical fuel injection. Now, just talk about fuel injection in general, as uh, John mentioned, in 1982, Corvette used what they call a crossfire system, and that also continued to 1984 with the introduction of the C4. That fuel injection was uh, the next step uh, beyond mechanical to electrical. And the way the system works is it has actually two pumps, electronic. And this pump, when it fires off, the same way elect electronically, it creates a mist. And that 
vapor goes across to the other side bank and allowing it to mix with the air better because of the distance from where the uh, mist comes to the to the cylinder head and then this pump fires and it fired it, it, the air flows to the other side therefore it's called a crossfire uh, then in 1985 the all the Corvettes went to the eight cylinders each having its own little pump and uh, just just explaining that to where the current technology is now on this one the distributor actually drives with a cable as you can see here it comes out of the side of the distributor and manually it's turning an internal shaft which goes into the fuel injection system and that is how they built the system then it's a mechanical it's also very dependable now some people say that the fuelies are temperamental. Well, it's like anything else. A mechanic that knows the system can uh, set it up properly, and as long as you run the car, or crank it up, and you know it's in storage, and every couple of weeks, and uh, keep it operating, then they're less known to have any issues. This particular one is set up beautifully. Uh, this is not something you get in and start patting the gas to uh, get it started like you would normally a uh, carburetor system, a fuel injection system. When it's normal temperature, you just get in and turn the key and it starts right up. Uh, if it's cold weather, you mash the accelerator one time and then let off and just crank it and it starts right up. But I do recommend on a fuel injection system to use, or at least in these years, to use uh, non-ethanol. Ethanol is not good for older carburetors, nor is it good for the fuel injection system. With that, John, I'll turn it over to you. Well, we appreciate your time at the BioVet Minute. You'll be seeing more of these available at our website and on YouTube for information about all your Corvettes. We appreciate your time. Thank you. Welcome back. Today we have the pleasure of sitting down with Jimmy Allman, the Vice President of BioVet. Jimmy, I've been working with you for 10 years now, and you've been with BioVet for an awful long time. Tell us how you guys got together. 14 years. Um, wow. I knew Greg Rush, the founder, uh, back when he and I were in our 20s. Oh, wow. Uh, here in the Atlanta area. I'm originally from Atlanta. Uh, Greg's been here for many, many, many years, and we were both in the consumer electronics field uh, in Atlanta. Uh, home Hi-Fi, car stereo, the good old days of the 8-track oh, tape player going into cars and being installed, and uh, that's where I met Greg. Oh, cool. And you said you've been with BioVet for 14 years. Wow. 14 years, December 2001. Wow. Um, what was your background before jumping into the automotive industry? After a couple of years of college here in Atlanta, uh, I got into the retail consumer electronics business. Uh, with a fairly large privately held firm, uh, and we had 60 stores throughout the country. Somehow I ended up in retail electronics and multi-chain operations and was in that field for uh, really until I hooked up with Greg 14 years ago. Wow. Well, that's interesting. What's your favorite Corvette, since that's what we do? You know, that's a hard one. I get asked that question quite a bit. Um, I'd have to say the generations, rather than a single Corvette, I'd have to say of the generations of Corvettes that the uh, 1967 is my favorite because it was the last of an era where the majority of the uh, technological advances were incorporated into Corvettes. Things like disc brakes, fancy things like FM radio, <laughs> uh, air conditioning, uh, independent suspension. And, of course, the body style of uh, the C2 Corvettes, uh, I think that's the one, the icon that most people say, and even kids at five years old say, oh, there's a Corvette. You know, uh, it's, uh, it's just it's iconic. So I'd have to say the 67 uh, coupe or convertible because it closed out a phenomenal era of the Corvette. 
some say the last Corvette ever made. <laughs> so what do you see as your vision for Biovet? We've been here for an awful long time. Where, where do you see Biovet in the future? Uh, we'll continue to grow. Uh, because of the advent of the internet, although we're a single location in Atlanta, Georgia, we are a multinational company, thanks to the internet. And uh, I think our growth will continue at the rate uh, that, that it's been at, but not at the expense of customer service. We have an excellent reputation. Better Business Bureau, uh, many, many, many testimonials. Uh, we take care of our customers well. So we'll continue to grow, but not at the expense of keeping the basics of what brought us here, which is profound, exceptional customer service. Great. On that subject, you know, what, what do you attribute the success of Biovet to? Um, the four G's. Great people. Great product. Great selection. Great customer service. And uh, we do have some of the most uh, educated, informed salespeople and service people in the industry. And I think that's what has brought us this far and will continue to take us further. Well, I really appreciate you sharing a little bit of your history with us today. Thank Folks, you. Folks, if you're at Biovet, stop by. Say hi to Jimmy. He'd be glad to talk to you about your favorite Corvette. And coming up next, we're going to see the Corvette of the Month. Welcome to Biovet. John Ivankovich here. Today we're going to take a look at a gorgeous red 1969 350-350 L46. This absolutely gorgeous car. Red, black interior, black top. And as I had said earlier, 350 horse. One of my favorite engines. Is in great shape. This is a great driver quality car. Chrome is in good shape as you can see in the front. Um, our emblems still very nice. The paint on the car I would give an 8. Um, some small blemishes here and there but in general very very nice. Tires on the car, the radial TAs are in excellent shape. I would say 930 seconds or better almost new. They have added the inserts to the side of the shark gills. As most of you know, this is the Shark Corvette. The Mako Shark was the prototype for this car. 350 horsepower engine is in excellent shape, runs extremely well, as you'll see here in a minute in the drive video. As you'll notice, this car has AC. That AC unit is a vintage air unit. So you have the modern uh, AC components, which makes it blow nice and cold. Our original shielding and such, so you do have originality. It is numbers matching. It is the engine that was born with the car. And the color to the car, as well as the interior color, are the correct ones for this car uh, when it was born as well. Uh, our interior carpet is in excellent shape, as well as our seating and door panels. Not showing any wear. Uh, probably have been replaced in the near pa recent past. Um, I always like to point out our center console, free of any blemishes all nice and clear AC or excuse me AC uh, does have AC but the uh, radio does have a, um, input so you could uh, hook up your modern phones and such as you're driving down the road in this beautiful old car has the Corvette mats the top uh, is in very good shape uh, clear back window uh, very nice paint and emblems in the back are in excellent shape as well. Our chrome in the back, I would say, is a little better even in the front. And lenses nice and clear, and of course, all in good working order. A little trivia for everybody. This is the Stingray Corvette. And the Stingray was actually a 63 through 67, but became so popular that in 69, they brought back the Stingray as one word. If you'd like to know more about this or any of our hundreds of Corvettes, John at buyavet.net or 770-605-2056. We'll see you on the road. Thank you for joining us on our inaugural Buyavet TV show. And we hope you come back for our next show in February and let us know if there's any subject you want to cover. Also, subscribe to our YouTube, buyavet.net. Put cars up every day. 
see you in February.